Imagine this. You're sitting at a New York City office in a secret location that only another 50 people know about, waiting for the phone to ring. You pass the time flipping through old magazines, watching taxis roll by outside the window when it happens. You take a deep breath. It could be anyone on the other end of the phone. A teenager, a senior in a home, a homeless person, someone living in a penthouse. You pick up the receiver and you say, hello, crisis hotline. This person on the other end of the phone has summoned you to this, one of the most intimate conversations of their life even though they don't know your name. Your heart is bouncing against your ribs, but you feel resolved and ready to be with them there tonight. This is the kind of scene that I encountered once a week as a suicide hotline responder. It was a journey that started with a pastel colored flyer at my college's library and led me to two different suicide hotlines 27 months of answering phone calls from people I would never meet, dozens of olives and chocolates consumed, not together, to keep me up into the wee hours of my shift. And through those hundreds of phone calls, here is the most important thing I learned. Don't give advice. Today, I'm going to talk about why problem solving isn't the best solution. And I'll share three tools that you can use instead. I know that not giving advice is a tough sell. I imagine that a lot of people listening to this are compensated handsomely to give recommendations to their clients. And there's something about giving advice that feels delicious when we have that perfect recommendation for someone we're talking to. I get it. I loved giving advice too. So let me tell you about how I stopped. Back to that pastel colored flyer at my college's library. It was for Nightline, our crisis hotline. I decided to volunteer, but our training was different and difficult. At the end of the semester, when I had my certification exam, I failed. I was given two months of remedial training, and it was in that extra time that things suddenly clicked for me. I began speaking differently, whether I was talking to my friends over text messages or participating in class. There are a lot of reasons why giving advice is a bad experience for the person coming to you. You only know the tip of the iceberg of what they're going through. Your advice might be full of judgment that that person just doesn't want to hear. But let me tell you why not giving advice benefits you, the listener. Not giving advice will free you. I've witnessed so many people feel paralyzed to find the exact right words to say when someone they love is going through something unimaginable. When someone we care about is hurting, we're hurting too, and we wanna take that pain away. And that is noble, but it's also impossible. Pain is part of life. Pain is part of growth. And even if we could craft the perfect word so someone could find a path out of that pain, they won't be ready to walk it until it's their time. I will admit, there is a caveat about when you can give advice. You can give advice when you've earned the right to give it. You can earn the right to give advice when there's information asymmetry and you have hard facts or details that the person coming to you doesn't. 
You can earn the right to give advice when someone directly asks you for it. And finally, and most importantly, you can earn the right to give advice when you've done everything to listen first. So if you aren't filling up a conversation with recommendations and suggestions, what can you do instead? I'm gonna summarize a whole year of learning into three different tools you can take with you. Throughout, I'll be using a common example of why someone might approach you for help. Say, a colleague who just received unexpected negative feedback from their boss. Tool number one, open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are questions that can't be answered with a simple yes or no. And they usually start with words like how, what, or why. So if this colleague came to you, instead of asking, was that feedback about the last project you did? Yes, no. You might ask, what was the feedback about? Open-ended questions lay out dozens of paths that the person coming to you can pick to go down and direct that conversation. Closed-ended questions stilt things with a yes or a no, and they can be full of judgment. If you ask your colleague, was the feedback you got about that last project you did? They might wonder if you think they did a crummy job. Skill number two, validations. Validations are a tool that help us show empathy and they acknowledge the legitimacy of the feelings that someone's sharing with us. Some validations recognize the difficulty of what someone is going through. For example, it can be really disheartening when your boss doesn't recognize the hard work that you put in behind the scenes. Some validations acknowledge the normalcy of feelings for a certain situation. That might sound like this. You weren't expecting this feedback today. It makes sense that you're having a tough time digesting it. It might sound simple, but validations are a radical thing. They help us wholly embrace the truth of what someone else is telling us and make us think about the parts of their story that we relate to, even if there are other parts that we disagree with. Tool number three, couching. So you've learned about your colleague through open-ended questions, you validated your, their feelings. Have you earned the right to give advice? First, ask yourself, what would happen if I didn't give advice right now? And if you sit in that question and your answer is still that you think you could help them, that's where couching comes in. Couching connects the opinion you wanna share with the thoughts, feelings, and facts shared by that person in that conversation so you can make sure that your advice is relevant. An example of couching might sound like this. It sounds like the feedback you got today really caught you off guard and you didn't get a chance to express what you were really thinking about. It might be helpful to write down what you wish you would have said and later decide if you wanna share it with your boss. Open-ended questions, validations, couching, three tools to add to your repertoire. But fair warning, they only work if we're really listening. I hope that with these three tools, you'll shed the weight of finding the perfect words the next time you're in a conversation. I hope that you'll find the courage to step into someone else's pain instead of constructing an exit path out of it. I hope that you'll dip your toe and see how long you can go without sharing advice with your boss, your brother, or your best friend. Can you have a whole conversation with just open-ended questions and validations? Can you go one, three, five exchanges back and forth with someone without offering a suggestion? Who knows? Maybe you'll have a whole conversation without giving advice 
without ever offering a word of wisdom, but instead a mirror to their heart where they can see themselves reflected. Thank you.